also the polymath brought up quantum cognition in his video response to me, and how he says that it's only being modeled as quantum, and it's not necessarily actually quantum. I have no problem with people talking about the mind in this way, as long as they realize that they are only talking about a model and not the actual thing. There are a bunch of models of the mind, but so what? That tells us nothing about the actual substance and nature of the mind. Sam Roth made a similar objection to me on Facebook some time back, saying that we don't actually know if it is quantum or not, before having a temper tantrum and blocking me. So I figured, since this topic came up twice, I'd make a video on it explaining why it is very obviously the case that quantum cognition is literally quantum. Once we get to the last few reasons, you'll see why it is actually on par with flat earth theory to think that it isn't literally quantum, and why the notion that it is classical cannot be taken seriously as an alternative. Before I continue, I will just briefly explain that quantum cognition is the field of research showing that aspects of our introspection, such as fuzzy logic, behave exactly as though they were superposed states in the wave function prior to collapse. So let's begin with the list of reasons. Number one, explanatory parsimony. Firstly, why bother suggesting that the mind behaves quantum when it isn't actually quantum? There is no good reason to posit an additional unknown mechanism that behaves quantum mechanically but isn't, when we already have a perfectly good quantum mechanical mechanism in existence that fits the description. Number two, the qubit unpacking problem. Secondly, there is the Feynman universal simulator problem. Specifically, if you're going to simulate all the superpositions of a quantum system with a classical system, you're going to need to unpack all the states in superposition into a proportionally much larger classical information system. Of course, this will exponentially eat up processing power and information storage space. This is impractical and will be vastly more complicated than a system that behaves quantum mechanically simply being quantum. It does not make sense to say that the brain is behaving as a quantum system but is really classical. We certainly don't see the brain slowing down exponentially so as to simulate fuzzy logic in such a manner that it appears quantum. Number three, IIT and binding. Next we have integrated information theory, or IIT, and the binding problem. According to integrated information theory, a form of integrated information is entangled information. Of course, entangled information is not the only form of integrated information, but the point is that the notion that quantum cognition is literal is corroborated by other theories as well, and is thus far more likely to be literal. Furthermore, the binding problem indicates that the information integration has to be perfect. For example, the red is perfectly integrated with the round shape in the perception of a tomato. You don't get this with classical information, though. Anything classical can always be disassembled into little separate mechanical pieces. The only place we find perfect integration, however, is in entanglement, where two or more elements are perfectly defined by the same exact quantum state. So the only thing that makes sense of the binding problem is quantum integrated information, which would once again entail that consciousness is in the wave function, and thus that quantum cognition is literal. Number four, the observer effect. Next we have the fact that we already know that one aspect of consciousness, namely perception, is quantum mechanical to begin with due to the observer effect. So now that we see that another aspect of consciousness, namely introspection, behaves as though it were quantum as well, it makes no sense to posit an entirely different non-quantum mechanism for something we at least directly know is related to quantum effects. Of course, you're going to say that the observer effect is not consensus and that there are other interpretations, but it is pretty easy to cut through that nonsense. Firstly, the other interpretations have problems that rule them out, such as unobserved heat capacities and a failure to derive the Born rule. Secondly, however, in 2013, a poll of physicists showed that a total of 61% of physicists agree that the actual physics is telling us that consciousness causes collapse, but then 55% of them reject their own physics. In other words, they say that their own physics, which successfully predicts everything in reality, does not apply to reality. Given that they admit in the poll that they do not have a scientific reason for rejecting consciousness causes collapse, their opinions on that matter, and thus the lack of consensus derived from that, can be thrown out on its ear. We don't need the opinions of science-denying apes to know what the physics is telling us. Now, of course, I think an information-theoretic approach is better than the Copenhagen interpretation, but that has something similar to consciousness causes collapse. Namely, if it is applied to interactions with minds the same way it is with the orthodox extension of Copenhagen, it treats perception as identical to rendered quantum information. So given that perception is quantum and that perception is tied to introspection, it makes no sense to say that perception is quantum and introspection is not. All of this aside, you need an interpretation that has perception as some entity in the external world, if science is possible, anyway. 
If our perceptions are not part of the external world, then we have no reason to believe that they even correlate to an external world, and we may as well do away with science altogether then. So there really is no good reason to reject this. Number 5. The Cartesian Requirement The next one should be blatantly obvious. Modern physics tells us physical space-time is an illusion. Clearly, the mind cannot be in space-time, or it would have to be an illusion as well. But if you posit that your own mind is an illusion, you implode epistemology, and all of your knowledge claims go right down the toilet. So the only alternative is that the non-illusory I has to be outside space-time, and that is only possible if it is non-local. So of course quantum cognition is really non-local and quantum, or else it couldn't possibly be modeling a real non-illusory mind. Number 6. Non-spatial platonic forms. Lastly, we have another reason, which is also blatantly obvious from epistemic grounds. Our thinking, or cognition, accesses platonic forms outside space-time. So if quantum cognition is really modeling this cognition of platonic forms, then obviously it must really be quantum and non-local, for the same reasons given in the previous example. And of course, without platonic forms, your epistemology can't be grounded and implodes. Of course, in the last two examples, you may say that this is injecting philosophy of mind into science, but when it comes to studying the mind, the primary evidence of consciousness from philosophy of mind is actually the most important part of the scientific evidence to begin with. Without that, there is nothing to call a mind that you are actually studying. Lastly, I would like to address your mockery of Hameroff. Stuart Hameroff is insane and removed from reality on this topic, and I thus write him off as totally irrelevant. I find it a bit ironic that you would think of him as insane when you yourself have cited the ignorant P-zombie Marvin Minsky as an authority, who self-admittedly has no genuine understanding of consciousness or anything else for that matter. Anyone who admittedly understands nothing, much less his own consciousness, is hardly worth serious consideration on the topic of consciousness, or for that matter, anything else that requires genuine understanding. Given that materialist approaches to the mind are not adequately able to explain the primary evidence of consciousness, and quantum approaches are, this would suggest that quantum approaches to the mind are the only sane approaches out there, and that would naturally include a literal view of quantum cognition. If you like this video, subscribe and support me on Patreon. And don't forget to check out my novel, Alaris, The Lances of Light, on Amazon Kindle in the description below. You can find us on Facebook as well at Idealism and Science vs. Atheism.